In this example, we're told we have a Peerless Model 16A 18B pump. So we're given what the pump is. And it's proposed that this pump is going to be the supply unit for the Purdue Engineering Mall fountain. So the fountain we have right out in front of the ME building, uh, this is the pump that we're proposing to use to, to create that fountain. And we're given some information about the fountain. First of all, the pump outlet is going to be three feet below ground level. And the water flow is to reach a peak height of 30 feet above ground level. So the, we want the, the fountain of water to go all the way up to 30 feet. We're also told the discharge from the pump is six inches in diameter. And we're given some information about the pump performance. So you can see here we have the head rise that we get from the pump as a fu function of the flow rate through the pump. This is the NPSH and the power of the pump. And if you look on these curves, you'll see that, or look on this plot, you'll see that there are actually four impeller diameters given. There's a, an 18 inch impeller diameter, 17 inch, 16 inch, and 15 inch. That's D1, D2, D3, D4. And you can see here, there's the D1, D2, D3, D4. And it'll be the same sort of thing down here. D1, D2, D3, D4. And all the NPSH curves all look pretty much the same as one another. So let me just draw a little picture of the geometry that we're dealing with. We're told that we have some ground level here and the water's coming, uh, the pump is down here and uh, it'll come out here and then you'll get a fountain. We're told that the top of the fountain should be 30 feet above ground level. So we'll call this our Z direction and that the pump is three feet below ground level. So this is three feet here. Okay, and we're asked to find what kind of head must be supplied by the pump, what's the flow rate that must be supplied by the pump, what's, what pump impeller diameter should be used. So you see that we have these four pump impeller diameters. Which one of these four should we use? What's the pump efficiency? What's the, required, uh, what's the power required to drive the pump? And what is the NPSH acceptable at the pump inlet? What range of NPSH is acceptable? So a lot of different things we have to determine here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as far as finding the head that must be supplied by the pump, what that head supplied by the pump has to overcome is the change in elevation of the fluid. Okay, so we're not in, a, we're not in any sort of pipe once we leave the pump. It, it just goes straight from the pump straight upstream. And so... We're trying to find what kind of head that pump needs to provide, and that, that head has to overcome the elevation head of the fountain. So the head that we need to supply, um, that needs to be supplied by the pump, is just going to be the 33 feet. That's it. Right? If we can get the pump to provide 33 feet of head into the fluid, then that will be enough to overcome the elevation head in the uh, that that in order to uh, get the flow to go from top to bottom or bottom to top here okay so now let's go ahead and figure out what kind of flow rate we need to have so that's part b so we know that the well uh, to define the flow rate we can just simply use the bernoulli's equation from the end exit of the pump all the way to the top here so we can call this uh, i don't know call it point one down here and point two up here. And we'll apply the Bernoulli's equation from between those two points. So we'll write out Bernoulli's equation. Notice that I'm not writing the extended Bernoulli equation. And the reason for that is because this isn't a pipe flow. It's just a regular, you know, uh, fountain. So there's no, there's no pipe between points one and two. It's just a flow, you know, exposed to the air there. With that in mind, uh, P1 and P2 are both atmospheric pressure. V1 is just going to be related to the volumetric flow rate, which is what we're trying to find, divided by the area of the pump exit. We're given the di diameter of the pump exit. It's given up here as being six inches in diameter. So we know the diameter here. Uh, v2 is going to be zero because that's simply the top of our fountain, so that, that'll have zero velocity. And the z2 minus z1 in this case will be 33 feet. 
because we're going from the exit of the pump to the top of the fountain. Okay, so we can solve then for V1. Oops. When you solve the extended Bernoulli equation, it'll end up looking like, or I'm sorry, the Bernoulli's equation, it'll end up looking like the following. And we can plug in the numbers to get V1. 46.1 feet per second. Excuse me, I just sneezed. My allergies are acting up. Okay, so now that we have the velocity and the diameter, um, we can use this expression to find what the volumetric flow rate is. And that comes out to be, when we plug in the numbers, 9.05 cubic feet per second. Or in gallons per minute, you could do a unit conversion, and that's 4,060 gallons per minute. It's a lot of gallons. So just over 4,000 gallons per minute. Okay, so that's, we've done now parts A and part B. Now we're asked to find what pump impeller diameter should be used. So we can go back up here. And let's first of all, just remember that our volumetric flow rate is just over 4,000 gallons per minute. So when I look on this plot, I'm gonna be somewhere over here, just kind of running up the line this way, right? And then uh, I also need a head rise of about 33 feet given right here. So let me go over from 33 feet. So here's 33 roughly, and we're right about there. And if you look at that for a moment, the closest pump impeller curve that we have is really this D4. It's, it's really, it's not exactly on there, but it's pretty darn close. So we'll use that as our pump impeller because it, it's pretty close to the right performance. So our pump impeller diameter will be the 15 inch one, the D4. So that's the 15 inch pump impeller diameter. So what's the pump efficiency under these conditions? Well, if we look at the efficiency curve, here's about 80% efficiency, there's 75. So we're just under 80%. So I'll just call it 80% efficiency. So that's about 80%. What's the power required to drive this pump? Well, we can get this two different ways. Um, the first way we can do it is just from our calculation of power and head rise. So remember that uh, the head rise is just the power divided by mass flow rate times gravity. And we can work this out uh, that way. Remember, uh, let's go ahead and rearrange this. So the power is the density times the volumetric flow rate. This is just the mass flow rate times gravity times the head rise. And then um, we can plug in numbers for this. We know the head rise was the 33 feet. That's what we need to get into the fluid. This is the power into the fluid. We know the volumetric flow rate, that was the 40, 60 gallons per minute. We know it's water we're dealing with. We know the acceleration due to gravity. So we can then calculate what the power into the fluid is. And I think if I, uh, I guess I don't have the, the number for that. So I'm, I'm just going to put some dots there. But anyway, we can calculate that. That's the power into the fluid. If you want the power into the pump, you have to make sure you use the efficiency. So the efficiency of the pump is going to be the power into the fluid divided by the power into the pump. So you can find the power into the pump is the power into the fluid divided by the pump efficiency. And we already uh, found the pump efficiency previously. That was about 80%. Here I do have the number. So if you, if you go ahead and evaluate this, that comes out to be 42.4 horsepower. Okay, so just to um, kind of go back and talk about that again, if we want to find the power into the pump, what we did is we started with the power that goes into the fluid, and we know that's related to the head rise into the fluid. We know the head rise was 33 feet. So we just rearranged this equation to solve for the power in the fluid. We know the density of water. We know the flow rate we're dealing with. We know the acceleration due to gravity. 
We know that the head rise was 33 feet. We can solve for the power into the fluid, but that's not the power into the pump. That's just the power into the fluid. We know the efficiency of the pump is how much power gets into the fluid versus how much power we put into the pump. So we can rearrange that. And then when you plug in all the numbers and do the unit conversions, it comes out to be 42, just over 42 horsepower into the pump. So that's one way you can do that calculation. Another way is to actually just use the plot that we were given. If you look on the plot, you'll see there's a, um, there's a power curve that's given for this particular pump. We know the flow rate. And as I mentioned before, this will be the D4 curve. That'll be the D1 curve up there. So we just go here. Excuse me. There we are. We look at that and just kind of work our way over. And you see it's about 40 about 40 horsepower, which is pretty close to what we calculated here. The, the plot's very approximate. But anyway, the two are consistent. Now, the last part of the problem is to find what range of NPSH is acceptable uh, at the pump inlet. So to do that, we, again, we come to the plot and we'll go to the NPSH curve. And this is the what this curve is, is actually the NPSH R. It's the net positive suction head required by this pump. So we see for our flow rate, looks like our NPSHR is about nine feet, it looks like to me. So what we need is our NPSHA to be greater than or equal to the NPSHR. And then NPSHR we just said was about nine feet. So the NPSHA that we have to supply to that pump should be ideally greater than about nine feet. So we just need to make sure that our pipe system is set up such that we have more than nine feet of head leading into the pump so that, um, or at least nine feet of NPSHA leading into the pump so we can avoid any cavitation. So that's it for this example. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. So we'll go ahead and end it there.